a boy, I wish I could fly. Me too. So did I. Out the window and over the trees. High up the cloud and lighter than air. Then loop the loop and up to the stars. I dreamed about flying all the time. What? Girls dream. Up to the stars. I like that. Me too. Eventually, of course, we dream other dreams. We change. We grow up. It always happens. Nothing is forever. Everything ends. And so our story begins. Ooh, oh, oh. Supposing all these planks and ropes are now the British Empire. We are lords. And captains. Mothers. Orphans. Sailors. Pirates. Tropical kings. And use your thoughts to hoist the sails and deck the ships. Awaiting us this early grey and misty dawn in 1885. A crucial year in the reign of Her Majesty, Queen Victoria. God, God save her! Who, by her grace, had only just knighted a new peer of the realm. Lord Leonard Astor, dedicated minister to the Queen and devoted father. To Molly Astor, whose mother flew up to heaven when she was just six years old. And in the years that followed, a nanny was employed to take care of Molly and provide her with all the essentials of young womanhood while bringing her with him on every mission. Lord Astor gave Molly a life few girls would normally know. A life that made her insatiably curious, insufferably bright, and pretty much friendless at school. Friendless? Ha! Friendless? You mean like... Leave me alone! Often most useless creatures on earth. Look at them. Cast out by mothers who can't feed them or love them. No mothers in St. Norbert's. Only schoolmasters. Much that I hate to lose you, mule. And you, you, I won't stand in the way of opportunity. Keep your trip on the ship. What ship? What trip? Sorry, I'm lost. Me too. Boys. We're, We're lost. lost. Boys. And so it was on the brink of a new adventure. That, that three filthy orphans. orphans. And Lord Leonard Astor. His friendless Molly. And her nanny, Mrs. Bumbrake. Joey had gone to the, the docks of Portsmouth. Where two trunks are loaded onto two ships sharing the very same dock. Two trunks, deliberately similar to each other in their trunkness. One of them containing a precious cargo belonging to the Queen. To be accompanied by Leonard Astor aboard one of the ships, a spanking new frigate. Commanded by Leonard's old school chum, the legendary Robert Falcon Scott, captain of the Wasp. Faster ship of snow, bound for the remote kingdom of Rondu. And the other trunk, hello, Sam, courtesy of me, Bill Slank, captain of the other ship. The Neverland. The Neverland, a slower ship, and long in the poop. A, a merchant ship, taking the longer route to Rundoon just to be safe. And while nobody's looking, I'll mark the other trunk for one supposed to go on the wasp. And then at the last set, all ashore who's going ashore, I'll switch them. Get this trunk aboard the Neverland, you garbage! Not sell these boys in slavery. Cheer up, lads. You're up to a noon to be helpers of the king. Food for snakes, more like. Greater boys coming aboard. Make a course, say your goodbyes. Goodbye to who? There's nobody who cares. This is why I hate, I hate, I hate grown ups. Stow your cargo, start your play. I do, I do. Operations are made on the deck of the wasp. Call all hands and the cats from the table down the road. Keep away, say goodbye, far from the wall. A squadron of British navy seamen arrived from all the uniforms aboard the wall, led by one Lieutenant Gregors, ready to accompany her men. Lord Leonard Astor aboard Her Majesty's vessel, the wasp. Captain Scott's compliments, Your Lordship. You join her aboard the wasp as soon as possible. A moment. Captain Slank! Here you launch it. I'm bringing the Queen's treasure with me aboard the Wasp, but I leave a more precious cargo here on the Neverland. Guard her well. 
Mrs. Bumbray, bring her to me. Daddy! Molly, my Molly. Please, let me come with you. I don't like it on this ship. You'll be safer here on the Neverland. Soon as I arrive in Rundoon, I'll have completed my mission, and we'll be together again. <laughs> There's an air about him. The look of a boy who doesn't miss much will say much about it. Back in the crate, you monkey. Something about the boy makes Molly feel like she just grew up a little. Daughter, a word. There is no treasure in the Queen's trunk, and what is in it has to be destroyed by order of Her Majesty, Queen Victoria. God, God. save her! God save her! I'll have to move quickly before the King of Rundoon even knows I'm there. But how are you going to destroy it? Can you keep the secret? I can. We can. Qual reacher? Reap, reap, burn? Flip, flip, quah? Sorry. Flip, flip, quah? I think you They're mean. They're speaking dodo, a language known only well to words. Uh, dodo. And a handful of very uh, special humans. <laughs> Dodo, very fat, clumsy bird. Hence the Latin name Didis Ineptus. Known for its greedy appetite, slothful pace, and sense of entitlement, the Dodo bird was fearless of people and faced no competition, an eerie mirror of the British Empire during its colonial zenith. Of course, those same traits were responsible for the Dodo bird's extinction, an eerie mirror of the British Empire after its colonial zenith. But thereby hangs another tale. And don't ever take it off or let anybody else touch it. You know what's inside this amulet, Molly. And you know how to use it if you're ever in trouble. But what if something happens to you? You need me on the wasp! Too dangerous. I won't have it. I want to be part of the mission! If you can't be British, you can go right back home and straight to school, young lady. Oh, Mrs. Don't, Bumbray! Don't send me home, please! I'll be good! Uh, uh, I uh, promise! Shut the faucet, Molly! Lovering like a whale when the world's your oyster! A woman. Yes, Nana! Soon as we're done in Rundu, we'll take a few weeks off in the antipods. Maybe scare up some rare bird eggs? I might even teach you how to speak porpoise. Yes, Daddy. There's my little star catcher. Just an apprentice. If I were a star catcher, I'd be on the wasp with you. Slank is that word. Star catcher. But I cannon is fired from the deck of the wasp! Doctor. Keep a keen eye, Mrs. Bumbray. Not to worry, Lord Ashton will be British to the bone. We'll meet again in Rundu. God speed. Off you go, your lordship. Deed to your thing. Can't be Ollie. That's nice. Now. Ow! Where are you, you good for nothing fucking scum? Yeah! Look, he's doing that garden for safekeeping. I'm taking no chance. Oh, wait just a moment. I know fancy no dainty dogs is roaming my deck. Now, hook it. With pleasure. The cabin can smell no worse than you, sir. Yeah. Oh, can we have Kitty with us? <laughs> Steer clear of the puss pit. Rip your hand clean off. Oh, but say the word, madam. Take that letter for a promenade and give you some fetching of our own. Oh, uh, no. No, thank you. <laughs> Come along, my girl. It's all right, ma'am. I'll we'll see you safely stowed. Oh. Thank you, kind sir. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Your eyes are as green as the sea, and your hair is almost as wavy. Thank you, below, sir. <laughs> Look, the silly cow in the junior suite. <laughs> What are you sniggering at, you pig room? Stow that truck in my cabin! Swim us to the monocle! Smell the hemp and jig in the butter! Back in my salad days, I was a green girl bringing up 
rats. A big, greasy brownstone in Brighton. That is a tough spot to hell on the house of hell. Especially the kitchen boy, a love-eyed lad, who cooks a faster fazool to make you drool. But oh, how it made the master man for the mistress moan for his manicotti. He beat that boy something brutal, but the boy didn't say boo. Point is, we must button our beaks and be brave like that boy, or my name's not Betty Bumbrake. Now, I know you might be afraid you might never see your father again, and that cuts me to the core, but you must not show that sorry slave the slightest sniff of fear. So men can smell it on your body, and they make you pay. <laughs> That's a stupid example if you're going to cry halfway through. Be a woman. <clears throat> Situated, Miss. Mrs. Bumbrick. Mrs. I was word once. Dreadful business. Oh, Mr. Bumbrick fell off the twig years ago. Let me widow that for thirty. Is that food? I'm awfully hungry. This food ain't for no ladies. It's for the pigs down at the other end. Pigs? Really? May I help you feed them? My mother loves all God's creatures, you know. Not these creatures, you know. But don't despair. Cook's laying up some meat in the gully. I'll escort you when it's up. Nothing too rich, pray. We women must watch our wisdom. I've been thinking about getting in shape myself. Round is a shape. Sorry? So true. You're quite the specimen. No. Oh, flabby thighs. Fortunately, my stomach covers them up, though. Well, best be off. <laughs> TTFN! Ooh, he's rough, but he's ready that out. He smelt like smelt. True, but there's a whiff of hero about him. Mark my words. He left the cabin door ajar. I could follow him and feed the piggies a man and a please. Wait, Molly, come back here, Molly! Oh. Oh dear. Best bring back a bucket. Before Betsy Bombray blows her blooming breakfast. <laughs> ah, thank put me on pit duty, the rat bastard. I'm going down to the village to feed the swine. Wish, 
way is poor. Not the left, you fool. Give me his left. A nice big P to help you remember. Well, if it ain't the three little piggies, don't you see legs? Oh, oh thank God, you, home, home, home. Excuse me, sir. Quick question for the captain. Oh, what are you, piggy spokesman, huh? I'm the leader. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I'm the oldest. I'm the oldest, and I say pipe down. But I'm hungry. Well, it's your lucky day then, ain't it? Finally! Wanna gobble that down quick? Any good? Oh. oh, it's alive! It's worms! He fed me worms! I won't eat that! Please, sir, is there a vegetarian alternative? <laughs> you know, in my day, pigs weren't quite so particular. Don't hug it all! Give me! You said you wouldn't eat it! You! Wait! What are you doing? Go get us a beating! Well, I not you! I'm called Mister on this vessel. A token of respect for a lifetime of seafaring. Never mind him. He's got a real problem with authority. <laughs> so do I. Look, I know worms is rough middles, but it'll grease your pipes until we set you down in run doom. A question, mister. One. Do we have to stay down here in the dark? So Slank hands you off to King Zarboff. Is the king nice? That's two. I got a sick feeling about this. I'll think of something. No, you won't. <laughs> In my experience, boys are sadly slow thinkers. What is it? What are you? I'm a girl. <laughs> no way. We saw a girl once. Headmaster's daughter. It was nothing like you. It was all, Arr! Arr! Gonna getcha! <laughs> Who's the leader here? Who wants to know? Molly Asta! Dr. Pretorius back home says I have an extraordinarily high level of brain power. Well, you're so smart, how come you're stuck on this dirt bucket? I'm not stuck. I'm going to run Dune. My father has important things to do. We have important things to do. <laughs> no, we don't. Yes, we do. I'm the leader and I say we got some things. He's not the leader and no, we don't. You. You. How old are you? H how old are you? I'm 13. Well, I'm 13. Wait, I just remembered. Today's my birthday. I'm 15. <laughs> Wait, if, you're thir if you were 13 and today's your birthday, you'd be 14. I only celebrate odd-numbered birthdays. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Doesn't matter how old you are, I'm still the leader. The leader has to be a boy. Hey, up our end of the ship, we get served proper food. I can lead you there, which would make me the leader. Proper food? Really? Just tell me your names. Why should we? Only that. If you have names, they serve you meat. Ted! I'm Ted. <laughs> but I call him Tubby, because he's food obsessed. I am not food obsessed. Do you write poems about pie? To pass the time. High beads in your blanket? It's a blood sugar thing. Faint at the merest whisper of, get this, sticky pudding. Sticky pudding? It's so good. <laughs> like I said, food obsessed. I'm Prentice. I'm in charge here. Ever notice, Ted, the more you claim leadership, the more it eludes you? <gasps> oh, snap. <laughs> and what are you, boy? Leave me alone. Sorry. Don't take it personally. He's rude to everybody. It's why he gets beating. And why he's got no friends. Go on, tell her your name, why don't you? What's so funny? 
Thanks, Ted. He doesn't have a name. Been orphaned too long to remember. Gremkin calls him. Yeah. Go on, you and your stupid names can go follow some stupid girl. Like we need your permission, friendless. Does it cost any more to be nice, charmless? What about the food? You can be like temporary leader, but only to we eat. Fair warning, boy. I shall expose you utterly. Right. Follow me! Right. Follow Mother Molly. That's what I said. Follow Molly. <laughs> Although the boy have mis may have wished to be alone, he didn't really mean it, and the sparkle in his eyes fades as the strange sounds in the dark make him remember the orphanage. Makes him think about... Where's that No, I hear you, Mr. Grimkin! You are all shaken, nasty mule. Why, look at his face. Uh, but please don't hit me, sir. Sex with dirty work. A mule afraid of his own shadow. Be a man. Uh, th th thank you, Mr. Grimkin. Uncover yourself, disgrace to the mother that left you. <laughs> you next? At the mention of mother, Peter heard the sounds of a song he barely remembered. And saw a shadow of a home he hoped he might have. Father and son, mother and child. And even with so little ground for hope. Still, he believed. Despite his distress and sorrow. That someday such a home would be his. Home. Orphan rule number one. Uh, life is meant to be horrible. Rule number two. There are no orphans in heaven. Rule number three. Mrs. Grumpkin's ugly! <laughs> Everyone who loves it, dead! Mother. Mother. Come on, boy. Last chance. We asked us do not leave boys behind. where Lord Astor, Molly's father, has been roughly ushered below deck. Captain Scott's coming, your lordship. Do go in. Awfully cramped for captain's quarters. No frills on a frigate, sir. Hey, Sanchez, pull that. That's a good fella. Where's the captain, Lieutenant? I'm no lieutenant. I told a lie. <laughs> Unthinkable. British never lie. Well, pirates do, don't we, boys? I demand to see Captain Scott. Well, why didn't you say so? Presto, Scott. What? Robbie, how dare you, sir? Release this man immediately. I'll take the key to that treasure trunk of yours. You'll have to kill me first. Charge hereabouts. 
The devil, you say? The prince of darkness. Ah! Our satanic supervisor. Ah! Foul and nasty with the cloven hoof. Ah! And how might one identify him in a crowd? By his legendary cookie duster, that's how. Whiskers? By his celebrated mouth brow, that's how. Well, does he have a name? The pirate captain they call Black Stash! <laughs> Sing my was pretty close, pretty darn close, flipping rabbits really. Hairs! 
take a little detour. We pluck her off the Netherlands, and you can watch her die. <laughs> Unless you're feeling a weighty bit more amenable. Oh, love your locket, but what's in your pocket? Allow me. Dunned and dusted, kippers and custard. Here's the key, boys. Yeah! Oh, my father! He's in trouble! Your neck thing is blowing. And ringing. Don't ask me about that. I can ask whatever I want. I'm the leader. Lay off, Prentice. Come on, do tell. Right, listen. My father is going to run Dune on a secret mission for the Queen. What's the mission? Molly, where are you, girl? Shh, down this gangway and keep it quiet. Tell me again, what's it called? What we ate? Pork chops, pork salad, and pork belly pie. The greatest night of my life. Shh, there's more tomorrow if you don't get caught. Pork. Beautiful word. There's that ringing again. Connecting. No, it's coming from someplace else. I think it's coming from behind this Get door. Away, boy! Don't open that cabin! Holy Slight! Cat? Why? Because there they are. And there's the cat. That cat is definitely mine. And those dogs are definitely And that cabin is definitely going. Oh, bing, ringing, flying, it can only mean one thing. Star stuff. Star stuff. The green trunk is in Slack's cabin. Okay, nothing to see here. Move along. Well, that cat was. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Tommy's right. Your neck thing was blowing. It's like cat. About a bedtime story. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh, you poor thing. You've never had a bedtime story. This might sound kind of offensive. Kind of hard to have a bedtime story when you don't even have a bed. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to. You know what? You say sorry like, like it's the easiest thing to say in the world. The rough patch is smoothed over, no hard feelings, and everything's fixed. Well, no. There's a mass of darkness out there in this world. And if you get stuck in that cave like us, it beats you down. And sorry can't fix it. Sometimes it's better to say nothing than it is to say sorry. You know, when I'm scared at night and I'm too scared to sleep, I look between the cracks, you know, between the boards and the windows, and I look at all those stars that I just can't reach. And I hope that in 100, 2, or even 300 years, maybe, boys will finally be free, and, and life will be so beautiful that nobody will say sorry again, because nobody will have to. I think about that a lot, you know? Well, that's more than you said in the last 13 years. So, a bedtime story? It's not a big priority, okay? No, no, it's not okay. I'm giving you one. It's a gift, least I can do. Like, um, Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty's a good one, you'll like it. There's a kiss in it. Who loves kiss? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Then I'll tell you. Come on, back to the cabin and I'll be mother. Now, the story of Sleeping Beauty. Once upon a time, that's how they always start. Once upon a time, a beautiful baby was born. And that baby had a big, bushy handlebar. And it grew up as he grew up. And they both lived hopefully ever after. The end. From this day forth, it'll be nothing but pleasure cruises and the old America's cup for me. Now open and prepend. What's that? It's sand, sir. Sand? But that's impossible. <laughs> 
you say sand, do you mean the utterly worthless, granular material one associates with the water's edge? Yes, sir. I see. <laughs> Perchance you think this treasure trunk sans treasure has put my piratical BBDs in a twist. How wrong you are. Though I'd love to be hip deep in diamonds right about now, it is truly a poor substitute for what I really crave. A bona fide hero to make me feel whole. But without one, what am I? Half a villain? A pirate in part. Ruthless, but toothless. And then I saw you. And I thought, maybe. Can it be? Could he be the one I've been looking for? Would he, for example, give up something so precious for the daughter he loves? But alas, he gives up sand. So, treasure plus hero, very good. Hero, no treasure is doable. But no hero and no treasure, not so much. Now where's my treasure? What have they put the trunk, sir? right? Yes, yes, the prince, very good. And the prince chopped his way to Sleeping Beauty's castle, saw his true love and kissed her just once sweetly on the lips. and tries to reach Molly. Daddy, Daddy, are you there? Hello? Can you Hello? hear me now? Can you hear me now? Daddy. Oh, Daddy, the Queen's trunk is here on board the Neverland. Not in English. Too dangerous. Oh, dear, please don't speak in. Thrump, burp, whee! Oh, Daddy, not Dodo. Mwah, mwah, rip. Parrots, a flock of parrots. Rump, rip, yeah. Parrots have taken over your ship. Well, what genius brought parrots on pirates? I mean, Molly, are you oh, taken over by pirates? That hard eye sound is so tricky. Molly, as soon as we catch up to you, steer clear of black stash and bring the trunk to me. I will. This is your mission now, Doctor. Do not let me down. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. What? What? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, what? Get below, boy. It's like sees you on deck to rear up like the talking to your neck. Thing. No, I wasn't. I know what I saw. There was a porpoise. Porpoise, see, swimming alongside the deck of the ship, and it was making those funny noises that porpoises make, and I thought I'd make some funny noises too, that's all. So you were talking to a fish? Porpoises aren't fish, they're mammals, just like you, or Germans. <laughs> then how come your neck thing blows the rings all by itself? For swimming. I'm a good swimmer, it's a Swimming medal. Right. Swimming. Sure. And then what's star stuff? Decision. I'm going to trust you. Why? I'm just a boy. I know. Pity.
city. You like to look at the stars. Well, there they are. There are so many. They look safe, don't they? Sparkling up there like diamonds. I like it when they, they shoot across the sky. Sometimes pieces of those fall to earth. Little bits that look like sand. Can you keep a secret? I, I can. We can. These little bits are called star stuff. The trunk and slacks cabin is full of it. There's someone here too in case I'm ever in trouble. Star stuff! No, Let me see! No, it changes people if they touch it. How? Different ways depending on what they want to do. So, if somebody got their hands on star stuff and they were... They're evil or greedy like Genghis Khan or hunger for world domination like Caesar or Napoleon or, you know, Ayn Rand. Who's that? How oh, don't you learn anything at that orphanage? I mean, I was kind of busy trying not to die. Oh. Okay, if star stuff's so dangerous, why do you have it? I'm a star catcher. have special powers that we use in secret to keep star stuff away from tyrants who try to rule the world. Oh, like Queen Victoria. But say for, and no, that's different. She doesn't need star stuff to rule the world. She's British. <laughs> so you're a, what is it? Star catcher. There's only six and a half of us in the world. Six and a half? I'm still an apprentice. Okay, then prove it. What? Go on, amaze me with your special powers. It's not a magic show. I'm not like some magician guy. I mean, you can't really do anything. Fine, whatever. To have faith is to have wings. So that cat was flying! I want to fly too, like, like you and the cat. Get serious, will you? The star stuff has to be destroyed. You want me to destroy it? Be ridiculous. My father is going to throw it into the world's hottest active volcano, Mount Jalapeno. Where is that? Run Dune, wouldn't you know it? The problem is King Zaba III would kill for even a thimble of star stuff. I, I can help. I'm going to be the king's new helper, so when we get to our doom, I can just ask him. You're not going to be his helper. You're going to be snake food. King Zarbov likes to buy orphans and feed them to his snakes. So, so Grandpa Ken lied? King Zarbov the third is evil. He's the worst Zarbov yet. Grown-ups always lie. This is why I hate grown-ups. You want to help? Then help me get the queen's trunk to my father. You know what? Forget it. Why should I help anybody? What's anybody ever done for me? You. Snake food, really? I told you to stay in your cabin, you orphan slut. When were you gonna tell us we were gonna be snake food? That's it. Bill Slake is drawing the line. I may not have been born with a silver spoon up in bum, but that don't mean I won't stir me to you with one. You. That's gross. Get below, boy! He ain't no blow, he's going over! Oh, let go! Let me go! Sapa promised me his old bleeding fleet in exchange for the trunk in my cabin. Strong dust blow, winds hit 34 knots! This is why I hate grown-ups! Make like a kitty. Take a long, long time to drown. Bottoms up, boy! Wait! Not overboard! I can't! Can't walk! I, I can't swim! Here I am, boy! All will be well! Approaching 40 
knots, white caps and crests overhanging. Ship up the board now. I'm the cut of a jet. She can be the wasp. The wasp? Half glass. Better tell Slank. Backstroke is my event, and I do so like to finish first. I win more medals at school than anyone, except for Daphne Cooper. But Daphne Cooper's a swat. Oh, deep breaths, there we go. You saved me. Of course. Oh, why? Because I'm the leader. But you don't even like me. The leader can't go around saving only the people she likes. But the leader has to be a boy. Only if the boy knows there's more important things in this world than saving his own neck. Like what? Like saving someone else's. They figured out how to swap the trunks. Sleep. We need the wasp. To catch up to us quick! So good, she's a fast ship. We can please try. Fill the up too. Here's the breeze now to feel great. You'll have to catch me first. Follow the wind, Weevil. Hard to starboard. Boy, then turn the ship wheel with everything he's got! Straight for the horse! Straight for the horse! Wind! 47 knots! Yeah, warning! Cheeky, huh? 
more. Well, I'm still the leader. Then help me get the Queen's trunk out of Slang's cabin and onto the wasp. Sorry, not our issue. Never mind. I'll do it myself. Mrs. Bumbrake! Mrs. Bumbrake! You're different, you know that? Don't you think he's different? We should definitely wait here. We'll be safer. There's more important things in this world than saving your own neck. Like what? Like helping Molly. And up on deck, two captains square off for the greatest of grand prizes. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming out on this stormy night for our future club. In this corner, direct from small far way of Dustin, with the intimacy issues of the gladiator. Oh, this? 
uh, totally. Molly asked to me to protect it. From who? Dirty pirates like you. <gasps> but we have all the fun! You do? Absolutely, little swaps, little buckles, you're nothing more than bread. So join the party room. Appellation, please. Your name, Bob. Ah, uh, no name. Orphan. <gasps>
is perfect. There's nobody chasing after me with a stick. There's nothing between me and the sky. I can just be a boy for a while. I mean, it's all I've wanted anyways. I gotta get out of here! Prentice, look! It's Peter! Sorry, did you want to be alone? Oh, no, 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 stay, stay. Good answer. Thank you. You ready for this? Teddy floats. We jumped overboard and I held on to Teddy and the two of us bombed all the way here. Prentice! No name! I got a name now. It's Peter. Solid. Whatever. Hey, guys, look, it's, it's the wasp. Way out there, do you guys see it? It's still in one piece. Oh no, I see where this is going. Where's mother? For the love of her name is Molly, and she probably drowned. No! She probably dove off the ship before it sank. She's like a real swimmer, you know? She probably made it to the wasp, or she's floating on what's left of Neverland. Ride this wreckage, Romeo! Get us to shore and make it fast! You want speed, yeah? Find me a sail! Well, I'm up in China drifting like this, and I'm in no mood for Mushu. Tried it once. Went through me like the winter wind in Wessex. <laughs> Or maybe she's down there in the jungle. We should definitely wait up here for her. No, come on, help me hide the trunk, and then we can find some branches along the beach. At some point, we're gonna need food. Branches, branches, what we need are branches. Hey, look, I think I found some. Sweet. Oh. <laughs> Should not have done that. Branches, branches. The guy's got a jumps for branches? So we can build a raft and sail out to the wasp. If we make it to the wasp, Molly's father has to take us. Where? Home. Come on, everybody. Let's hold hands and nobody gets lost. Clear? Crystal. Ew, your hands all sweaty. Yeah, because yeah. perspiration is the mark of true leadership. Are we good, guys? Yeah. yeah. You there, Peter? I'm here, Ted. You there, Prentice? Prentice? Teddy, are you holding on to Prentice? Teddy? Guys! Where is everybody? Pino, Pioco, Teddy, Yano, Mosca, Pino, Grigio. You said hang on to each other, Peter? No, Pino. Where are you, Peter?
but you're savages. We mollusks are no savages. I know where savagery is, boy. When I was young man, English took me to your island in chains. Many long years I served as kitchen slave in not so great Britain, until by kindness of fate, our shipwreck brought my father back to Mollusk Island. Yes, in my language, my name is Fighting Prawns, and this is my son, Hawking Clam. <laughs> For years, that my son shall wear this hat once worn by my brutal British master. For years, I was his kitchen slave. He beat me raw, but I was brave. And one day, put him in his brain with a plate of poison pasta. <laughs> Thank you. Come, it is time. Time? Feeding time. Feeding time. Finally. Not where you eat, piggy boy. Where you are eaten. You must answer to the law. The law of Mr. Grin. Who's Mr. Grin? We worship him, and he protects us from foreign troublemakers. Come, we feed you now to vicious crocodiles. <laughs> well, wait. Uh, um, don't feed us any crocodile. Uh, take us to Mr. Grin first, please. Crocodile is Mr. Grin. Pasta! Wait! Uh, I can bring you great gifts. Anti-pasta! You said gift? Um, uh, 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 a gift. Uh, yeah, a uh, uh, bedtime story. Sleeping Beauty. Right, guys? Sleeping Beauty, yeah. The thing is, I, uh, I nodded off before the end. Shh. And maybe they will too, and then we can get out of here. Um, we give you bedtime story, you let us live, and we leave the island. Deal? Okie dokie. But if I am not entertained, Mr. Grinch for all of you! Assume the position! You have one minute. One minute? What am I supposed to do in one minute? I can't transform. I can't inhabit the character. Bring me the holy relic of my captivity! Here, mighty father, the kitchen timer. You have one minute. Starting now. Okay, okay. One at a time. Upon a time, that's how they always start. Upon a time, upon a time! Fast hungry, Mr. Grinch! <laughs> okay, okay. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful baby princess. <laughs> and an evil witch with a curse. Enter 
entertained, mighty father. First prize, you got me with squid poop. Two thumbs up, two thumbs way up. That means you get to live, right? That was the deal. Which is great, see, because you need us. We can do all the things you guys don't want to do anymore. We're foreigners. That's what we're for. <laughs> nice try, but the law is the law. All English must die. Calamari! <laughs> made by the English, not for the English. Worse yet, the walls of Mr. Grint's cage are very high. Too high for any boy or girl to climb. Too dark to see the crocodile in front of your eyes. Oh, and those hard things the boys are sitting on? They feel like bones. All in all, it's a very bad day to be British. <laughs> your stomach. I want to go home. What home? He made a deal with us and he lied. This is why I hate grown-ups. Prentice, you're the leader. Have a plan. Eat the kitchen timer and leave us alone. <laughs> Great. Now we can count the seconds until we die. This is all your fault, Molly. Making me feel like this big man who can save the world when I'm not a big man and I can't save anything. Not a good time for a hissy, Peter. Failed so you try again. My Bob always says that. Then you let him save us. <laughs> Give him the trunk to my father, then he'd have all the stuff. Molly, Molly, you idiot! She's cracking up. No, maybe she has a plan. I do. I have a plan. <laughs>
You've been hitting the three bin couscous again, haven't you? Weren't I, Captain? Oh, I got it! Luckily for me, it's me. You saved your ukulele. Oh, Captain? Our siren song is what we need, me. And you will be our luscious siren. <laughs> Woo, big crook! He's chewing on all of the scenery, sir. Not in my scene, he ain't. Spare me the theatrics, you reptilian ham. <laughs> Water, that's remember the mission. Very convenient. Un getzi blingen doozy plackin, that's take the trunk down to the beach. Marlabella Ferna, father will be there with the longboat. In a heine Ferna, so be a heine Ferna. Safe, if we can just get past the pirates and make it to the beach. Then Turin in der flank and essen neck and fresh the cuder. Neighbor, neighbor, Nessa, neighbor, Nanka, bin to Ruba, Lanka, sink and hook and keep the motor cook and Anka, Danka, Papa. Love, Daddy! <sighs> Women are tricky, man. <laughs> man, I feel kind of stupid not knowing your region. It's not a contest, though, if it were, I'd win. <laughs> and all that running, too. Man, you're really fast. Well, you're a better leader. Really? No. Oh. <laughs> Now that's the sound of a leader! Ah. I'm not leading you! Afraid I'll beat you to the top? As if! Bravo, Peter! Here I am, mollusks! Come and get me! A mermaid? 
Well, well, nice of you to drop in. I'm teacher, that's what I'm called, and yes, I speak English. <laughs> I know your name is Peter. I know a lot of things. Um, where am I? In a hurry. <laughs> that, that's right. I, I was being chased by the Mollus natives. The Mollus natives. natives, yes. I know. <laughs> they, they were trying to kill us, and we just want to go home. Yeah, life's complicated. <laughs> we were going to build a raft to sell it to the wasp. Well, Molly's father. You don't need a raft to get home. And you don't need the wasp. All you need is star stuff. How do you know about the star? Listen to teacher! <laughs> when you rode that trunk to this island, seawater seeped inside. And then the star stuff in the trunk enchanted the water. And then the water enchanted the fish in the wake of the trunk. And then the waves washed what? in. How do you know that? I'm not what? finished! <clears throat> Pardon. And then the waves washed into this grotto where I was swimming. So you used to be a fish? Scotch salmon! <laughs> this is way cooler, FYI. <laughs> but you see, the star stuff will change you too. It'll make you into whatever you want to be. What? I just want to be a boy for a while. Couldn't I just be a boy? Well, I suppose you could just be a boy. Once you sit in the star star. Yeah, then what? Well, sky's the limit. You could even fly yourself home if you wanted to, just like you've always dreamed. And find a family. Ah, well in that case, you're going to need something. A name. Instead of Peter? In addition to Peter, a family name. And boy, do we've got a good one for you. A good name, great name, the best name, huge name. And in the water, or in the grotto, or both, a voice, or an echo, or both, seem to respond. What are you, boy? Uh, I'm Peter. Pan? Pan? You mean like that thing you find in the kitchen? <laughs> oh, you are just too cute. <laughs> By Pan, I mean two things. The first is fun, frolic, anarchy, mischief, all of the things a boy likes to do. Fun! OK, yeah, I, I like that. Oh, you're changing already. But you said pan means two things. What's the second thing? Shouldn't you be on your way? Molly's going to beat you to that trunk. Molly! The trunk! Tomato! That, that pink dot on the horizon! Betty, you're a genius! We hoe a vast behind! My bloomers have stood up to stronger winds than this! Full speed ahead! They're safe! That's good! I wish Peter were here. <laughs> Get the trunk down to the beach! Now move it! Down the mountain is worse than any of your sins. Because the rain isn't like the rain in the world. In front of trees. Surrounded by trees, smacking your face. And you can't breathe. 
from the bugs. And they're in your mouth, and up your nose, and down the front. So you take cover and wait out the storm, but you can forget about sleep. It's way too scary out here, and there's a lot to say. you're willing to give up for them. Even if, in the face of death, I may have, you know... Wanted to? Didn't say that. Got it. Good. Wow. You know, now that you're here, I might just rest my eyes a little. Got him, remember? Is that the sun? What's, what's for breakfast? Huh? Oh, did he say the sun? Well, if you can see the sun... If you can see the sky at all... We must be very near the beach! Come on, boys! We made it!
hungry. So very hungry. There's the long boat. But where's Daddy? Fruitcake! Get your taste of fruitcake out! Oh my gosh, yeah! No, Ted, don't! Fresh out of the bakehouse! Ted, no! Yummy, yum, yum, yum! You're the black stash! My father will have your guts for garters! <laughs> Wait, just a no, sliver! No, too latey, matey, plan C! Molly, Molly! Oh, Mrs. Bumbrake, you're Mrs. Bumbrake! Bum broken's more like it! They grabbed us by the mangroves when we landed the ruffians! Ruffians? How dare you, madam? We are no ruffians! We've never even been to a ruffia! <laughs> I don't care what you are, sir, I assure you. What I am, madam? Well, I'll tell you what I am! Smee, how flat an 
and unprofitable the world must seem from the deck of the H&S cynic. Go ahead, lad, take your girl and live to see another day. My first mission and I wrecked it. Open it to me, open and elaborate.
You made your bed, Pan. <laughs> Do I? Get the hook! I got down on bended knee, and Mrs. B said, You betcha! Betty bum breaks bound for bridal bliss! Aye, the HMS bum break may have a few barnacles on her bottom, but I will scrape them right off! Don't speak, dearie. <laughs> TTFN, Ronnie. Ta ta for now. Or in my language, Tiramisu! 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 Then old sport, it's back to England. I can finally set my sights on the South Pole. Uh, the Antarctic. Or well, my name's not Robert Falcon Scott. Trug to the longboat. Good luck, Captain Scott. Don't let the Norwegians beat you to it. Nobody beats the British, little girl. Poor Britannia. Not a little girl. A full-fledged star catcher. <laughs> I told you! And teacher said that all I needed to get home was star stuff. Ha! Wrong! Who? Who's teacher? Oh, she, it was this tricked out mermaid. Well, she was a fish, <coughs> but then she swam in the grotto, and now we're going home! Whoa, whoa, whoa. What grotto? The grotto with the golden water. Did you go into that water? Yeah, it, it was amazing. It was all warm and tingly. Soft stuff, and he soaked in it. Molly, we can't do this. It, it, it already dissolved in the waves. <coughs> the waves that turn fish into mermaids. I'm sorry, Peter. We can't take you with us. But what? What? What I do? He isn't evil. Oh, greedy! And he we isn't... don't know what he is or what he wants to be. I just want to be a boy for a while. With star stuff, a while could be a very long time. I'll be good, I promise. The boy deserves a home! Of course he does, but wait. Leonard, old man, you're getting slow. Peter, what if the mermaid was right? But she wasn't right, and neither are you. You're grown-ups, that's all you do. You lie and then you leave. I thought you said all she needed to get home was star stuff. But I'm still here. Precisely. Did she say anything else? She said I needed a family name. And then she gave me one. Pan. Pan as in all, probably. All? Your family name, understand? The whole island, all the ants on the beach, the birds in the sky, the mermaids, the mollusks, the pirates, the boys, of course. Especially the boys. They're all your family now. And how does that make you feel? Like, I'm finally out of the dark. There's a name for that, Peter. Yeah, a home. And here you are, and here he'll stay. 
Yeah, me too. Totally count me in. You didn't really want to be alone, did ya? This is just so unacceptable. We asked us to not leave boys behind. Whoa, there's that crazy bird again. What do you want? Leave me alone. <coughs> Stop. Don't hurt that bird. You're going to need something to protect you. Now it seems to me, if we take the last of the star stuff like so, and stir vigorously, I believe it's anti-clockwise. Peter, lend a hand with the meringue. Whoa, it's all warm and tingly like, like the grotto. And so. Wizard! My hair! Come here, you! I can totally do that trick. Hey, Kenny, don't eat it! Nice to know I still got it. You really, if you really wanted to protect him, you take him with us. Tide's going out, my lord. I'm afraid it's time for goodbye. Dear woman, this is my address in London. You don't have to write me every day or anything, just when you feel like it. You know where I'm going to be, Molly Island. Mollus Island, you mean. Hey, you know what? Maybe I'll call it Neverland, you know? To remember. How do hero? Where will you get home? To remember. Molly, now. The tide won't wait. No, no, wait! I want you to look after Prentice and Teddy! Five more minutes! Uh, please, Molly, come on, tell me a bedtime story! There Molly, come on, tell me! There will be other tides, won't there? You see, she wants to stay! She can't! Soon, Peter, you'll forget, and it won't hurt anymore. No! It's supposed to hurt. That's how you know it meant something. This isn't the end. You're going to remember everything, every single detail. And you're a better leader. Really? No. <laughs> you won't stay mad at me forever, will you? Go on. Get lost. I'm bound to grow up. You see, what would we do? Be friends. In a year, that'd be hard. In five years, it'd be silly. And in 20, it would just be sad. You sound older already. <laughs> the thing you did against impossible odds is what you two will always have. The thing we did. Against impossible odds. Peter watches the wasp get smaller and smaller, wondering about his adventure, about Molly, about that kiss. It would be the first time that Peter would teeter at the top of the roller coaster, on the verge of becoming what he hated most, a grown-up. And eventually, as promised, he began to forget and stayed right where he was. The outsider. And Molly, true to her word, would remember everything. And then one night, Many years later, she stared out the nursery window, watching Peter fly off with her daughter in tow. And this grown-up Molly would comfort her new Nana, a good old dog tended for her children. Don't worry, Nana, darling. I always hoped that one day, if Peter came to visit, my daughter would take my place. And once Wendy grows up, I hope she will have a daughter. Oh, for the and so we may go on and on, dear Nana, as long as children are young and innocent, and food and juvenile and heartless.
Heartless has all the jostles of life till we fly back home. Get her away! Get it away! So calm down. I think she's trying to tell me something. You want me to race you down to the grotto? Hey, look! Dad sliced it open. Oh. Oh yes. Oh, so good. This is the best thing I've ever tasted. Better than sticky pudding. Oh. It's hard to believe you're still single. <laughs> wait, wait, how can I rip him down to the grotto if I don't run? I can what? What she said, what she said. To have faith is to have wings. Wait, did you say grotto? How would you guys like to be just boys for a while? The star stuff water could do that? It makes you what you want to be. A lawyer? Guys, this is going to be one awfully big adventure. You All said right. it. Ready? Ready. Ready. Set. 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 Go. Go, 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 go. Wow. Thank you.